excited, Pops. It's a pleasure. I love Pops. I love St. Louis. It's a good energy here, even though I haven't been able to make it to Sweetie Pies yet. So I plan on coming back to the restaurant. Yeah. Have you guys been? Yeah. Is it good? Pop. You haven't been there yet? No, I haven't been. I just watched the show. You should have sent a runner out is to it, Sweetie Pies. Is you know it close? No, it's not really that close. Okay, well then next time I'll just come back. That's what runners are for. Right, yeah, it's true. I don't, I don't, I don't take advantage of them like that. <laughs> so, new album out, Blackout. Blackout uh, the Sun. Blackout the Sun. And a, uh, and a tour, kind of after a, a year-long break that you guys have had. Yes. Feel good to be back out on the road uh, touring a new album. It feels incredible. The energy's uh, on 10. Um, for, for the longest time, we haven't done a tour like this where our booking agent has, for some reason, booked us 10 shows. I think it's 11 days and 10 shows, and it's pretty crazy, but uh, the energy every night on that stage from the, uh, the kids and the fans and the, fa uh, the family out that comes to see us has been incredible, you know, so, yeah, it's good. We, we, we've been enjoying it, and I'm in support of the new album, man, it's like, can't ask for anything more. Do you guys kind of need that year off to kind of maybe stoke some oh my God. fire back? We definitely, I did a big move from Atlanta, Georgia to uh, Overland Park, Kansas. A uh, few of the guys, John and Vinny, did a project. I was able to help them with a little bit. Clint Morgan put together a project. And I was also able to work with a couple of bands, like one band um, out of Kinetic, Earthside. And I did my first score with the Moscow Orchestra. So it was really cool, it was really challenging. And wow. I had a great time doing it. And uh, But yeah, we, that year off definitely helped us to go back in and, and just sit down to, and get together as a band like we started, you know. We, we didn't have any songs. We went in and booked the studio for 30 days and went in from 12 noon to 12 midnight every day except for Saturday and we would go back in on Sunday. And that's how we came up with the album. We had two different rooms that we recorded the album in so you could record anywhere in the studio. We had different writing rooms so it was something going on at all times and it was just a good, you know, it was like a busy beehive I felt like, you know, zzz, it was always going on. You know? right. Uh, tell me a little bit more about recording the album. I mean, you guys kind of went in yourselves and kind of took control of this one the whole way around. Was it, you know, what was the experience like not kind of working with a producer or whatever, oh, but doing it all? We've done it before. It was good. You know, every once in a while we like to have a producer come in and police the project. But uh, I think with within this time, uh, with the time off and everyone pretty much, you know, we, we're all, we all do things and we all have great ideas. And so we just said, let's just go in and do it ourselves. We really don't need any one to come in. It was really, we were focusing on honing in on Seven Dust and, you know, rebuilding our, our, our core. And that's what we're able to do, I think. How's the new uh, material being received so far? Cool. Well, Clint's not with us right now, so we're only doing Decay, which is great. And now that he'll be coming back, we have Till Death in the set when he was there with us for a minute. And we'll probably start putting in like four or five of the new songs in, which I look forward to. When the catalog keeps growing and growing, it gets harder to pick, but uh, it's definitely a pleasure. I can't wait to play all of Blackout the Sun. Who, who puts the sets together? Do you we do. Want, do. You guys all put it like work together on it's, it? Uh, and, and you know what? Sometimes I can't wait for that day when it's time to pick the songs because we can all be in the room and have the instruments on and somebody will say, hey, what about this song? And you might get through three bars of it and somebody will be like, Boop. <laughs> and it just derails and we're all laughing like yeah that song sucks you know so but it's fun you never know we try to make you know uh, we try to pick and pick from each album and you know make a fun set just something that's exciting mm -hmm. absolutely uh, so you guys kind of released this new album on your own label seven brothers yep and you guys have kind of uh you know work to make your own path with the own label do you think you, you guys like like having it that way that you can kind of control your own destiny yeah. and decide what what release you want to have? How yeah, well, yeah, we have it. a partnership, you know, but uh, it, it's good to be able for us to police it and not just have everyone else looking over it. You know, if any advice I can give to those uh, people out there that are in the business, uh, women and men, to not only stay true to your art, but uh, be a businessman or a businesswoman in this music business. Uh, and I think you'll go a long way. Uh, but for us, it's great. You know, we're able to sit back and say, yeah, no, you know, hey, check it out. All right, wait a minute. I just saw that guy walk out and his pocket's a little bit bigger. So, you know, it's cool to be able to you know, to kind of police what's going on and have nothing, you know. And, and now, not like it was before at the end of the tour, I get a Chico stick and a couple of t-shirts from the band that we're on tour with and some guy that's working for us is driving off in a Jaguar. I said, it was cool, you guys rock. You know? Can I give you a ride? Right. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Right, you, so. think, uh, you think bands now need a, a major label to uh, speak? No, not that. No, I think I like, I like the... And don't ever say I said, yo, oh, you don't need a label. The machine is something that's always incredible to have, you know, that type of distribution and that that machine is always big. But I definitely have seen 
today uh, bands that are socially you know networked and this is incredible uh, avenue that these kids are taking so I think you know you can definitely do it uh, but definitely the days of record labels I still think it's an awesome thing to get signed you know and and that whole nostalgia behind it so no I still believe in record labels and maybe one day Seven Brothers Records will be able to do some stuff like that and sign a lot of you bands out there. <laughs> Is that what you guys kind of want to do? Yeah, with, eventually, with yeah. I'll shoot y'all. I like to sit back behind the desk and go out and check out bands and help them out and sign them. Yeah, definitely, man. Absolutely, man. Um, so you guys have been together for a long, long, long time. We're old, but I'm the youngest. See, I like that. You key on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, do you guys, what do you guys kind of credit your longevity to? I mean, dealing with dynamic personalities, especially musicians, mm -hmm. and you know, a, a group of guys staying together this long, and remaining a unit almost 20 years later, that's rare. Yeah, that's rare. I just think, you know, we uh, when we were kids, we liked each other, you know, that's why we got together. Uh, I'm getting ready to sneeze. Pops. <laughs> it's the dust, it's the sand in this place. Uh, it's, uh, we, we were kids and we wanted to jam, you know, we didn't set out to get a record deal, it was just a bunch of guys that said, hey, you know, I like that guy, I like that guy, I want to jam together. And I think that's why it's still here. And I felt that first time we struck a, a note and, and wrote our first song, Black and Crazy and all that stuff, uh, that we were destined to do it, and I feel like that's still, I feel like there's a lot more to do. Right. Um, you mentioned the internet before, the explosion of social media and all that sort of stuff. How do you view that? I mean, obviously it, it'll cut down on your album sales because people will just steal yeah, the product. Yeah, right. But on the same hand, it's kind of a double-edged sword, whereas your music might be exposed to people. To the masses that, that never, never heard, heard it. it. Yeah, it's great. I'll tell you what, man, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, but I, I have to tell you what, I respect those people out there that didn't allow Black Out the Sun to leak when it was out there, and we're getting tweets and Facebook, and people are like, you know, man, we're, we're able to you know, download it right now, but you know what, LJ, we're going to wait to the, uh, the day the record releases. And that makes, you know what, and it, it didn't get leaked out. And so that was an incredible thing for me, so it still shows that people believe in that you know we're gonna help out the, the you know they call me the working man so yeah, so let's, let's don't keep a brother down but yeah it's good you know I, I can't back it as long as you get to hear the music and as long as we can play we don't have to be number one on the charts as long as we can come out and sell out these places and people still give us the respect and uh and allow us to to have the energy to do music then that's all that matters to me love that uh so you guys have been using social media i know that you're a big instagram guy. oh my god check it out <laughs> your big Instagram. Yeah, I just got into the Instagram and I realized that I've been welcomed into the photography community. Thank you. <laughs> I like my work. Uh, uh, we do work. Uh, me and John, now John thinks he's quote unquote, I welcomed him into the community because yeah, he's right. learned from me. So now we're, but Instagram, you know, for me, I think a picture says a thou even more than a thousand words, you know what I mean? And so it's fun and I can link it on to Twitter and, and I'm in a different place every day and I'm a big history buff and, and I, I'm able to go out and you know take pictures that I like and then people like it. So it's really fun, it's exciting and and what else to do? You know, I go to the gym and then I Instagram on the bus and uh, <laughs> Oh and I have I have my new series called The Back Lounge Dark Side, if you've seen on Instagram. Oh really? Yeah. I haven't seen that. It's uh what is my it's at LJ Spoon. We have this series of just really dark things I'm, i I collect antique toys so everyone thinks that I'm a creep but yeah, I saw the laser gun. oh that's just one of my toys <laughs> that's just one of the toys millions of toys that I keep you know you got to make it fun we're on that fuselage for a million I mean you think about it ten in a row right now two-month tour right. it gets crazy I have to have something you know and so you know we have a little fun we have little things and knickknacks that we play with do you let the daughters play with your toys? Oh my gosh, she had the ray gun just the other day. Really? And the other thing I had, some other light, we were hanging out. And she was with uh, Christina from uh, Lacuna Coil, and they were playing, Christina has little toys too, so she brought her toys in, and then Jada gave her one, her uh, My Little Pony. And it was such a touching night moment. We are sitting on a table, on a chair, on the couch, and uh, Christina said, so thank you for my the, the pony, uh, and her beautiful accent, it's Italian. And she's like, oh, what should we call her? And my daughter sat back and said, let's call her music. Wow, both that's what we said. We looked at each other and said, nice. And said, she's a four year old's got it, but all the adults, all of us, like, whoa, that was cool. <laughs> right. that so, yeah, you know, it's beautiful. Right? never-ending tour cycle obviously except what? for the past year yeah exactly it just started and it's like already grueling <laughs> you think that's 100 i mean 
bands nowadays, they have to be constantly moving on the road mm -hmm. to A, stay relevant, and to B, make checks. Right. That That is a must now, Yeah, right? definitely, definitely. You don't really have a choice. Touring is definitely where you make your money at. Uh, and thank the Lord that these people are still buying tickets and coming out, because uh, I still think it's a recession that's going on. But uh, I think music is a healer, and, it, and if without music, man, I think we would all go nuts. So mm -hmm. it's just good that they're coming out to these shows. Thank you, guys. That. What do you uh, What do you define as success in the music industry? Mm. I don't know. It's weird. Huh? Being relevant still. That's success. Not having a big house and fancy cars. Cause that stuff comes and goes. I think people still understanding and, and believing in you and staying true to your art. That's success to me. Right. Uh, being here and still being here, rocking it. What's up? Almost 20 years later. Yeah, it's crazy. My back hurts. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so wanted to finish up. I heard that you are uh, kind of kicking around the idea of maybe doing a little solo thing yeah. by yourself. I well, mean, I mean, it's weird, you know, man. It, it, when it, when it's said like that, it's like uh, this pressure thing that I feel because it's not. I I feel like, and I would never say I want to have a band because I think it takes longer and it takes time for a band. I think if you just got some boys getting together or some girls and some guys, that's a group right. for me. So it's just going to be me doing some music. I've gotten a few calls here and there, and I look forward. To, and I'm not uh, shunning anything away. I, just the other day, Aaron Lewis texted me up and said, "You know, man." Uh, he come on down here to Nashville, you know, he said, you know, Darius, and he said, that cowboy choice, I just don't know about it. He said, man, we can take it over. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and I'm interested in, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, so it wouldn't be anything too sure. far-fetched. You know, I'm just interested in doing something, but after seven, that slows down. And I always do my own music, but it's just something that I've kept behind, just because seven, us is my focus. And now that I'm 40, I think it's time for me to spread my wings a little bit with that stuff before it gets too late. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So it's gonna be I missed the time. All right, cool. <laughs> but I mean, you even look at like artists like Aaron and what he's doing. Yeah, it's I mean, incredible. He's almost just kind of completely transitioned. He still has the same yeah. thing there. And the Aaron Lewis, and then now the country. I gave him a hard time about that. Sure. I was like, you used to make fun of me, and you still do about my cowboy boots. But then I didn't see you for a while. And then you got like this born arrow and a, a, a acoustic chasing deer <laughs> in the woods. When I last time I saw you had on a pair of Dickies and some Adidas tennis shoes, but it's cool. I love you. You are country boy now. Aaron is awesome, and I'm so proud of him, man. And sure, we love each other. And actually, on the opening day of the uproar, me and the wife went to Kansas, and we hung out. We Aaron kidnapped us and let us hear the album, man. And man, that kid, he's always been a great singer. But I love his conviction, and I, I inspire to be like him. Absolutely. Know, right on. With this, if if you do a you know kind of a solo thing or whatever, is this stuff that doesn't really fit seven dust yeah I, I think but i think with my sound it'll still maybe have a little seven dushes if, especially if you have some grinding guitars on it and some bass it's gonna probably sound but yes i think it'll be a lot more soulful but i'm not afraid to get heavy you know i just want to do music that's what i love to do